Welcome to the Anime Audio Fob Podcast. Enjoy. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise. Chapter 4, Part 2. Konoha is huge, so you're guaranteed the basics, I guess, but most places are like this. Absurd. Chino's words came back to life in Sasuke's mind. Hell Valley was bigger than he had imagined, but Sasuke proceeded deeper, as if guided there. Further in, he stumbled upon a bright red pond. It looked almost like blood. Instantly, he was on guard, wondering if he had fallen into a jinjutsu, but there was no aura of chakra. He walked over to the pond. This, when he took a closer look, he saw that red-hot earth was erupting from the ground. This collected at the bottom and made the water look red. He looked around and saw that the path ahead was dotted with these red ponds. What the ninja from Yugakure had seen was probably these ponds, Sasuke thought as he looked out over at them. He drew in a sharp breath. In one of the ponds, he saw a human form. He immediately ran over. This, it was a sight that made him doubt his own eyes. In the red pool, ninja, probably the abducted ones, were snugly packed together. A layer of red earth also covered the bottom of this pond, half burying the ninja's bodies. The water was apparently cooler than the earth, he didn't feel any heat from it. But the bodies of the ninja in it were red. And he could sense a chakra aura in it. With his sharing gone, Sasuke looked at the pond and at the ninja. This is, there was chakra in the pool, wriggling around like earthworms. The ninja's bodies had been cut in various places, and the chakra appeared to be entering them through these wounds. Once inside, the chakra crept and crawled around their bodies like blood circulating. The ninja with the foreign chakra winding around into every crevice of their bodies had scabs over their wounds almost like lids to keep the chakra inside, and the wounds were quickly disappearing. Apparently, after the abducted ninja had been brought here, they were transformed into human bombs in these pools, and then sent out to the villages. Sasuke tried to counter Jinjutsu on the ninja right beside him. But the instant he put his hand into the pool, the wriggling chakra started to collect around his hand. A stinging sensation raised across his skin. TCH. Apparently, the chakra created cuts and tried to get inside the body. He pulled his hand out of the pool, shaking off the chakra, and looked once again at the ninja sleeping in the water. He felt no intention or will in them. Having lost human emotion, they were merely Chino's soldiers. They had indeed been made to closely resemble White Setsu. Sasuke turned his gaze forward. In order to save the ninja imprisoned in the ponds, in order to protect the villages, he would have to defeat Chino. This place, he had finally made it to the deepest reaches of Hell Valley. The scene that spread out before him made Sasuke unconsciously hold his breath. There, he found a red pond so enormous that the ones he had seen thus far didn't begin to compare, bubbling and boiling, giving off great clouds of steam. It looked like the red ocean he had seen in the Jinjutsu. The choking heat made breathing difficult. Tenacious like a snake, huh? A voice rang out from a place in the center of this boiling pool, clouded by steam. I gotta hand it to you, sassy. Chino was walking toward him, barefoot on the simmering earth. Her eyes were not yet red. Why do something like this? It wasn't his nature to have leisurely chats with his opponent, but Sasuke had to ask. Chino had been so talkative in the village of Takino, but now her mouth was clamped shut. Is it true that the Uchiha clan drove your clan to this land? When he changed his question, Chino's eyes narrowed as if she were glaring at him. First, Nawaki, now me. Where are you getting your info? Anyway, Chino looked at Sasuke with annoyance. That's right. Our clan was falsely accused and locked away in this land by the Uchiha clan. Right from the start, the Ketsuyuga of our clan was looked down on, compared with the so-called three great ocular jutsu of the Byukugun, the Sharingan, and the Rinnegan. But, like Chino said, we drank this boiling water, we shot birds out of the sky, we ate the few grasses that grew, we survived. Tired of fighting, our clan lived a careful life here, rather than going out into the world outside. And then, 
the world forgot about the Shinoiks, or they should have. Should have? Chino turned sad eyes away. Oyashiro learned about the existence of the Chinoik from past documents and kidnapped me when I was still little. Then he slaughtered my entire clan. To increase the level of rarity, I've even had all but one person in a clan killed. The words Oyashiro had said to him in the Colosseum. So that had been Chino, then. This history of my clan I just told you, I actually learned about it from the old historical documents Oyashiro had. After I was kidnapped, ever since I can remember, I was put through ninja training in Oyashiro's mansion. I was made into a tool to carry weapons on a fierce battlefield I killed without wanting to. That's why I ran away. In which case, had she also been part of Bright Lightning? That was Sasuke's thought, but apparently, he was wrong. The majority of the bodyguard group I escaped with formed Bright Lightning with Milwaukee and moved together, but I came back to Hell Valley by myself. I felt like I would understand who I was once I got here. But it was no good, a pained look came across Chino's face. My own father and mother, the faces of the people of the clan, I couldn't remember anything. I didn't know why I had been born, why I was alive. It was empty. It was just empty. Chino's face grew grim. Her eyes were gradually colored red. Still, I had planned to live here quietly by myself. I wanted to get away from fighting. But after he was deceived by Kirigakure and disbanded Bright Lightning, Milwaukee fled and showed up here. It took over a year for his wounds to heal, you know. He got no asylum in the villages. He had no family to protect him. He had no one to love him. He was used and tossed aside. That was his entire existence. Sasuke waited for her to continue. People like us, born with Kekaginkai, are always made to suffer. Our persecutors call themselves normal and make false accusations about us just because we happen to be alive. They're all peace, peace, but once war is gone, people with Kekaginkai are still persecuted. So I decided to smash it all for them. There's no hope for the future of a world like this. Sasuke couldn't deny what Chino was saying. The Uchiha clan too had been exposed to cold stares in Konoha. That was why Sasuke had hated the village. But there was a definitive difference between the two of them. Sasuke had been born in the middle of connections, and he had keenly felt those connections as he grew up. Chino had never had anything. She didn't know her parents' faces, she didn't know warmth, she didn't know bonds. That had to be close to how Naruto felt. You were alone to begin with. What can you know about me? Hun? This pain is born from my family bonds. How could you ever know what it means to lose anything? In my pain at losing those bonds, I yelled at Naruto, who had no bonds, about how he couldn't understand me. But still, Naruto had desperately tried to understand him to get closer to Sasuke's heart. He thought about it now. About how painful it must have been for Naruto to have no connections. About the terror of not having a single being to affirm you, of there being no one to love you. And then how tremendous was the loneliness when you found important people from that state of nothing, built connections, and then lost those connections? Sasuke's heart hurt. Even so, Naruto had never abandoned him, right up to the very end. I was jealous of you, Sasuke. Chino stared at him. Being born in Konoha, bearing the Uchiha name, and having a family that loved you. You became infamous after you left your village, but now you're... traveling freely like this. That's because you have people who love and protect you. He gasped. The Red Ketsuyugen. A tear spilled out of one of them. I get it. That you lived always, always, always loved by someone. You just didn't realize it. You just didn't bother to look at it. There were always people like that around you. Unlike me. Chino punctuated this with, That's too much talk. If you want to stop me, go ahead and kill me. But this time, don't forget the Ketsuyugan of the Chinoite clan. Chino pulled out a kanai and quickly cut both of her wrists. Hot blood spilled out, 
pouring into the simmering red pool. Using blood, the Chino-like clan can make use of all kinds of techniques. In particular, we can use the iron in blood. And in this place, Chino's chakra wriggled around in the red pool. These red pools contain a lot of iron, which further enhances the Chino-like powers. Chino will signs. Ketsuryugen. Blood Dragon Ascension. The chakra squirming around in the red pool began to collect at her feet and rise up, transforming into a red dragon with eight heads. It was big enough that he had to look up at it. Take this. One of the dragon's heads opened its mouth wide and came at Sasuke. NGH. This wasn't an opponent he could go up against with naked flesh. Sasuke concentrated his power in his eyes. Susanoo. The armored warrior appeared, and Sasuke thrust Susanoo's sword at the head of the blood dragon. He had no sooner watched the force of it send the head flying than another head grew up to take its place. And this bit down on Susanoo, stopping his movements. Steam sizzled up from the place where the dragon's teeth were locked on. The dragon's other heads also coiled around Susanoo. Sasuke spread Susanoo's wings and escaped into the sky. As if I'm letting you get away. Chino opened her eyes wide, as if to catch hold of Sasuke. Sasuke's vision was dyed red. Chino's Jinjutsu. The instant he tried to undo the Jinjutsu, one head charged, stretching out towards Susanoo's wings. Sasuke plunged his sword into the open maw of the dragon, and it ripped through the blood dragon's throat. One of the heads bounced back and scattered everywhere. Sasuke brought Susanoo back down to the ground and aimed with his sword at the base of the eight heads. There, his sword pierced the dragon deeply and two of the heads fell into the red pond, waves of water splashing up high. As Susanoo and the blood dragon drew ever closer to each other, Sasuke met Chino's eyes and caught her in a jinjutsu as well. TCH but Chino apparently had set up any number of Jinjutsu guards in her mind. Several red walls stood in his way, blocking Sasuke's entry. The walls melted and became waves crashing down on him. Jinjutsu trap, huh? The waves touched his body and his memory was slightly exposed to her. Chino's Jinjutsu was clever. And his head was spinning. She was probably fiddling with the iron in his body. It would be to his disadvantage to let this draw on. He focused on figuring out how to defeat her. Why? She suddenly cried out at him. Why are you fighting for the sake of Konoha? Perhaps she had seen something when she touched Sasuke's memories. Konoha's leaves are bright, its roots are dark. There is light and darkness in Konoha. For Konoha's nourishment, your entire clan was absorbed by its roots. So how can you fight for Konoha? How can you not be pessimistic about Konoha's future? Sasuke got some distance from Chino and looked at her. Why did he fight for Konoha? He found the answer surprisingly fast. Because I'm alive. What does that mean? Sasuke remembered. The sunrise he had seen with Naruto in the Valley of the End. The day he acknowledged defeat. I have a friend who saved me. A friend who can share my pain. A friend who can share your pain, and a heart that wishes that someday the whole world could be like that too, connects me to Konoha. He would endure until that day came. He would be the one to watch it happen. I am not alone anymore. I'll sever the chain of vengeance running rampant in this world. Just like my brother did, I'll support this world from the shadows, along with, Sasuke spat it out clearly, the light this world is gazing up ahead. He opened his eyes. This time, the Mangekyo Sharingan caught hold of Chino. NGH, ah, Chino and the blood dragon stopped moving. Sasuke aimed Susano a sword at her. He would decide this battle. Chino. Milwaukee called and came flying in. Typhoon style. Tornado destruction. Instantly, the wind rose up and became a sword to knock away Susanoa's blade. Although the sword's trajectory was off, 
the pressure wave sent the two ninja flying. Having lost its chakra, the blood dragon splashed into nothing. Ow! After slamming into a rock wall, Chino stood up, pressing a hand against her back. Milwaukee had fallen very near her, and he was more seriously injured than Chino. Milwaukee! Why did you come out? Chino grew pale and raced over to him. Milwaukee forced himself to his feet and pushed Chino behind him. Sasuke stood before them. He looked at the two of them and said to Chino, You should understand the meaning of what I said now. Chino eyes widened, and she looked at Milwaukee with a gasp. I have a friend who saved me. A friend who can share my pain. I'm not alone. I have connections and live in this world. Tears spill from Chino's eyes. Red tears. They rolled down her cheeks and fell to the ground. Milwaukee, that's enough, she said, pushing back a groan. That's enough, she placed a hand on Milwaukee's back and looked up at Sasuke. I wish we'd never met you in Takino. Then I could have hated you wholeheartedly. Belying her words, the expression on her face was clear somehow. I mean, once I met you and talked with you, it turns out you're not really the kind of opponent you can hate. You meet people and become connected to each other by talking and getting to know each other. Many things are changed by a single word alone. You win. Her red tears changed into transparent water. With a guy like you in it, I want to see what kind of future's coming for this world. Chino stood in front of a red pond. Sasuke watched from behind. Sasuke, I saw just a little of your memory. Something that could turn into the answer to your questions might be here. There was already no will to fight left in her. She intended to accept whatever punishment was meted out. Telling him that she wanted to talk with him before that, she had brought him to the pond where the shinobi lay. She reached a hand in and the wriggling chakra returned to her, including the chakra circulating in the ninja bodies. During the Fourth Great Ninja War, a suspicious group passed under Yugakure. She told him, a faraway look in her eyes, as if remembering it. I was able to get the information from the mineral springs. When the strange group touched the mineral springs in the earth, the information flowed into it. It had likely been the white zetsu. I used that structure as a reference to create this technique. But there was something I thought was weird while I was making it. When Chino placed her hand on the bottom of the pool, the boiling geyser stopped and returned to inside the earth. The water of the pond pulled back, finally releasing the bodies of the ninja. She looked back at Sasuke. In the middle of that strange group, there was one person who was faintly thinking that he should be fighting something different. Or maybe it's not like he was thinking about it. Maybe the idea had been planted in him. What do you mean? As Sasuke listened to her, his heart had started to pound a little faster. He had a bad feeling. I don't know exactly. But I feel like they were prepared for something different. To fight a more powerful something, Chino said. Sasuke closed his eyes tightly. This was the thing that had bothered him in the fight with Kaguya. Why, despite the fact that Kaguya was so strong, had she created the core of White Zetsu and prepared for war? An absurd fear was about to become reality. That something's definitely going to come along one day, Chino noted. The idea that there's a being that could threaten even Kaguya, and it's going to appear in this land? Did that mean that the day was coming when the peace they had finally obtained would be disturbed? Was the future people were walking toward now going to be destroyed once more? But Sasuke shook his head no. He wouldn't let that happen. He would protect it himself. Chino looked at Sasuke. You shouldn't carry it all by yourself, you know. When he looked at her, Chino was smiling. You have a friend to share your pain with, right? These words instantly shut him up, and finally, he nodded quietly. I guess I do. Right. He wasn't alone. Epilogue the village of Konoha, full of life, bustling with all kinds of people coming and going. Chino and her comrades had been sent to a detention center in its shadow. They didn't know what punishment would be handed down, but they were ready to accept it. This group was brought together in one room. 
Milwaukee and Amuyo were also there. Just when they wondered exactly what was going on, the door opened and a man with his mouth hidden appeared. Realizing that it was the Hokage, Chino's eyes rounded into saucers. She had never dreamed that the Hokage would come directly to a place like this. Hello, Kakashi said, a crafty expression on his face. He looked at Chino and the others. I'm the leader, Chino said. The head of the village was here. Which was exactly why she had to declare that now. I take responsibility for everything. So I want you to be lenient with these guys. Chino, that's not what we want. Teach, that's right, Chino. We were there of our own will. Well, just calm down, Kakashi said, looking around at the group. The truth is, I discussed this with Kirigakure and Kumagakure. And the Mizukage says she wants to take you in. She wants you to help Kirigakure. Chino and her men looked at each other. The surprise was greatest in Milwaukee and the former members of Bright Lightning. It's the idea that now is the only time to stop the chain of negativity. Apparently, the Mizukage discussed it over and over with the shinobi of the village. Well, as long as it's okay with you guys, that is. Kumagakure has already agreed to it. And Konoha, too. Chino couldn't hide her confusion at the sudden development. Kakashi started speaking leisurely to her and her group. What you did is something you'll never be able to make up for in your whole life. But every ninja carries something like that around to a greater or lesser extent. I'm like that, too. How about you fight again with your own life? Kakashi's words sank in for Chino and the others. Then there was someone peeking his face in from behind Kakashi. Master Kakashi. Let me say a couple of things, too. A man with three lines on each cheek. Fine, fine. No choice, I guess, Kakashi sighed and yielded the floor. So, look. Before he could say anything, Chino said, Are you that friend of Sasuke's? For some reason, she just got that feeling. Uh. Oh. I am. Sasuke's pal, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto grinned broadly at Chino's words. Your friend saved me from darkness, she told him. I'm grateful. Hearing this, Naruto forgot what he was going to say and was momentarily dumbfounded, but then he laughed with a note of embarrassment. He did. That was the light, illuminating the former darkness. So basically, Chino wants to go with Milwaukee and the others to the land of water. A guest had appeared at Orochimaru's base, Oyashiro Inn and his strangely designed sunglasses. Even so, it's really terrible, you know, Orochimaru? She knew I had a watch set up, and she marched onto the island. Thanks to that, those people were basically all captured. If you decide to catch them all, there are any number of people with offenses, you know? You. Weren't caught? As you can see, Oyashiro said playfully, Orochimaru narrowed his eyes. All according to plan, I suppose? Thanks to you, Oyashiro removed his sunglasses, put a hand to his forehead, and quickly lowered it. Appearing there were red eyes, Ketsuyugen. Fights are likely to break out in a small community. You live huddled together for many years, so the little squabbles build up, you start hating each other, and in the end, you're at each other's throats. When my wife got dragged into it and killed, all kinds of things stopped mattering to me. Even still, my daughter was surprisingly adorable. Her parent is a disaster, though, he added. What are you going to do now? Orochimaru asked casually. Good question, Oyashiro crossed his arms. I suppose I won't be able to run arms from now on either. Maybe I'll turn Hell Valley into a hot springs resort. Apparently, Sakura's hunch that Naruto was in a good mood was on the nose. Having seen off the recovered ninja of Kirigakure and Kumagakure, she finally had some time, so when Naruto visited her, he happily recounted what Chino had told him. Hearing this, her heart grew warmer. It's also a journey to atone for my sins. When he set out to travel the world, that's what Sasuke had said. 
and he was indeed proceeding forward with a sure step. But the fact that she wasn't there alongside him was sad for Sakura. She really couldn't wait forever. What if, next? When Sasuke returned to Konoha, she resolved in her heart to follow him for sure this time, no matter what he said. Still, it was kinda weird, you know? Sasuke's not here in Konoha, but it's like we're on a mission together, Naruto told her excitedly. Sasuke's not in the village, but he's protecting it. Right. There are a lot of things that only a talented ninja like Sasuke can do. There are guys doing all kinds of crazy things, but people who got it together just have to deal with people for real, this time. Naruto said. Oh. Sakura cried. In the back of Sakura's mind, the person who didn't lose to Naruto and Sasuke when it came to studying, a certain word popped up. Something that had a deep connection with Sasuke. What's up, Sakura? Naruto looked at her curiously. Sakura smiled. While you were talking, I remembered something. Do you know it? Naruto cocked his head to one side. So the thing is, his journey continued. Staring at the ocean spreading out before him, Sasuke moved forward at a quick pace. A presence that threatened Kaguya, he had hoped it would just end in needless worry, but he could no longer ignore it. He worked to find more information to hunt down the traces of Kaguya. He had a lot to do. Things that only Sasuke and his renegade could do. Mm, Kakashi? A messenger hawk appeared, and Sasuke took the letter from it. A neat report outlined the follow-up to the current matter. When he had scanned this, he noticed that there was another letter. He took a look at it. The handwriting was messy. He quickly realized it was Naruto. A letter from Naruto. Which read, So, like, I talked to Sakura. This time, you. Sasuke's eyes grew wide at the words that followed. The thought had never even crossed his mind. But somehow it made sense. This was what was noted in the letter. You're like the police force. The police force. The organization that had been entrusted with protecting the peace in Konoha, with the Uchiha family crest as their symbol. The Uchiha clan had founded it, and it had also given birth to tragedy. But it was a fact that the Uchiha clan had worked there for the sake of the village. The police force, huh? The scope had been shifted to the world, but the objective was the same. Protect the world. And this also led to protecting Konoha. In which case, maybe my brother was also the police force. Remembering Itachi and how he had worked from outside the village to protect Konoha, Sasuke smiled. Are you going to join too? Dunno. We'll have to see. Do it. When I grow up, I'm going to join the police force too. Memories of his childhood. They hurt a little, but even so, a smile rose up on his lips. Sasuke stopped for a moment, looked up at the sky, and changed directions. It's been a while, maybe I'll go home? He wasn't afraid to be involved anymore. The way forward was set. Sasuke started walking. Ahead was the village of Konoha. And of Sasuke Shinden. Thank you for listening. Remember to like and subscribe for lots more.